The secret to life is finding that sweet spot where you can do the absolute most with the least amount of knowledge and skill. I've built an entire career on this, and today I wanna to share with you some stuff that I've learned about learning guitar and music theory and pattern recognition and all this stuff, all right? So I was practicing for a show yesterday, and we were doing a new song that I haven't done in a while, Fly Me to the Moon, Frank Sinatra, right? Super old school, great song, classic song. I've played it before, but I've never like actually like committed it to memory. So I'm at the point now where like I know so many songs that I like, when it comes to like an older, like a good song, there's like actual music and not just like a three chord loop over and over and over again. For, for a one-off show, I'm like, oh, I gotta like learn like a full song. So I was like, oh, so I'm looking at it. And, and I'll, I'm gonna run through the chord progression real quick. It starts out with A minor, then D minor, then G, C major, F major, seven, D minor, E seven, A, A seven, D, G, C, down to A minor, back to D. It's like, oh my gosh, there's some G, C, then E7. It's like, it's like that's, uh, I'm never gonna remember all this. Then I was like, wait a minute, here's the pattern. And guitar is such an instrument of pattern recognition that I've been playing for so long and it took me a second to realize the pattern behind this and why it's such a great song to teach and to communicate a lot of these things. And now you can learn the song in 30 seconds, all right? So we start on an A, but instead of doing open A, we're gonna do the fifth fret on the E string because tracking root notes is gonna be the first part that we're gonna talk about. And once you can start tracking root notes and seeing how those root notes relate to each other, then, and only then, turning those root notes into chords that populate a key or a scale, this is gonna change your, it's gonna blow your mind, it's gonna change your philosophy on like memorizing music, maybe even jumping around, maybe even with your own musical compositions, all right? So. Let's go through that same progression, but do it in root notes on the E and A strings, right? A for A minor, D for D minor, G, C, F, D, E, A. Okay, so already you may have recognized some, some patterns here, right? Okay, now let's talk more about what we're actually doing here, why this is moving in a certain way. But first of all, you may be like, why does this sound so good? Because I'm using elixir strings. None of this music theory is gonna work if you don't put elixir strings on your guitar. They last way longer. You're gonna save a lot of money in the long term just because you're not gonna have to change your strings as often, which is seriously the, the number one reason I've always used elixirs because I don't have to change my strings often at all. I don't even wanna tell you how old some of these elixirs are, but you would never know because they still sound great and they look great. So thank you to Elixir Strings for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to this chord progression, all right? We start with an A, which is signifying an A minor chord. A in the key of C, the song is in the key of C, is a minor chord, right? And we've talked about this in other videos on my channel and stuff like that as far as like A being the sixth degree, blah, 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 blah. We'll get, we'll get to that in a second, but let's think of it just as its own thing, right? And then we just go down a string, all right? So we have a root note and then down a string, A to D, A, B, C, D, right? So we're moving, we call this a fourth away, right? Just a root note down a string. We're gonna do the same thing, a root note down a string, okay? G to C. We're gonna do the same thing, a root note then to D. Well, it's like, well, there, there's your pattern breaker right there, root note down a string. Ah, not quite. That's what maybe I thought at the beginning. It's like when I first did this, it's like, all right, I've learned enough songs where I know that like, all right, A minor to D minor. All right, I got, I got a root note, then down a string. G to C, easy enough. Root note, up a fourth, down a string, however you want to look at it, however the patterns fit together in your head. But then it's like, all right, now I have to make a special note to remember that F goes to D minor, right? Well, think about it this way. What if we kept on going down a string, we have a B flat major chord, and then in jazz, usually what you do is you make everything at least a seventh chord, right? B flat doesn't happen to be in the key of C, so this is why this is important. When we go F to B flat major seven, well, let's just take the root note away. What are we left with? We're left with the D minor, okay? If you just play the third fret on the D string, the second fret on the G string, and then the root note on the third fret of the B string right there, you could add the F if you want to. 
that actually is pretty much the same as going from an F, a fourth higher, going from an F to a D minor, or if you were to number these in the key of C, C, D, E, F, the four chord to the two chord, right? So the whole point of this is like, we're doing pretty much the same thing. Thinking of, well, D minor and B flat are pretty much the same thing. They serve pretty much the same function. And that's gonna lead us to the next part about just tracking root notes, thinking about the function of certain chords. And I think that this is way more prevalent in maybe older music because they, like older, when I think of older music, like standards, like Fly Me to the Moon or something like that. Everything moves with a purpose. And every time you see a seventh chord, you know what's coming next. You can predict things a little more easier. Modern music maybe kind of breaks those rules a little bit more, but you know, I think it's just a good rule of thumb to think about the function, the harmonic function of certain chords and the value of seventh chords. But we're gonna get to that in the next pair of chords, right? So we have A to D, G to C, F to, hey, we could play a B flat if we want, but really think of that as a D minor. And then E, to A, okay? The chords are gonna be E7, A minor, to A7, okay? So it's the same thing, we're just going down the scale, open E to open A, same thing, a root note and then a fourth higher, right? So you can really easily remember this song, the whole first part of the song, we'll call it the verse, as this being, this is our starting point, and now we have this pattern of going down a string, going a step down, down a string step, and then you can go down a string, or you could just play the triad, the D minor if you want. Uh, remember, that's just something, maybe you, you put a little asterisk on that, on your chord chart or something, and then end up descending through the scale, E to A, okay? Now by the time we get to that A minor, A minor seven, again, in a, in a jazzy version, we turn every minor chord into a minor seven chord, every major chord into a major seven, or a dominant seven chord. That move right there, A minor seven to A seven. This is gonna be the next hint in what we're doing and what I meant by harmonic function, right? Maybe you've never even heard of a term like that, like, well, what's the function of a chord? I thought these were just things that were thrown together to sound good. Well, there's a reason that they sound good, okay? A seven chord, dominant seven chord, basically a major chord with a flat seven, right? Usually only occurs technically diatonically, which just means using the notes in a key, the seven notes in a key, in one position on the fifth note in any key, right? We said this was in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G. Well, A7, that's not really a G, right? Wouldn't G7 be the chord? Well, here's, here's the point. This is pointing us to the next part of the song, right? So let's forget about keys for a second. Where is A the five of? We can kind of count backwards if, if you want, but essentially knowing the notes that go into a chord, you've already played this chord before. D minor, D, E, F, G, A. A is the fifth of D. So an A7 is gonna point us to a D chord. In this key, it happens to be D minor, right? It doesn't, it's not a D major chord. It's a D minor chord in the key of C two chord, right? And so what happens is it's pointing us to the next part of the song, which is D minor, G, C, A. And that repeats D minor, G, C, E7. And it's like, man, there's, there's another group of chords that like I have to memorize. Again, you don't have to if you know how this harmonic function works, because again, that A7 pointed us to the next thing that we're going to, right? It's like a little cheat code, a little hint. Eh? It gets us to D minor, and then it's like, all right, you may have heard this term before, a two, five, one. All right, what is that in the key of C? C, D, a two, D minor is two chord, C, D, E, F, G, G is five, and one is C. So. What a two five one is, is basically just kind of like tying those chords together and just marking those spots of where the fifth is. A two five one really just means a fifth of a fifth of the one chord, right? Because again, two in the key of C is D, five is G, 
but if you're thinking of G as one, G A B C D. So the two of the five, the, the two of the one is the five of the five. Okay, and you can kind of go backwards as far as you want to kind of keep pointing chords at the next chord in the sequence. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. If it didn't make sense, it'll sink in. But start thinking of like the relationship between a five chord and a one chord, even if it's not the the root chord of the key like C. Right. So that's actually why that A minor becomes an A7 is because we're setting it up for the next part of the song, which is a 2-5-1. D, G, C, A minor. It's like, well, where did A minor come from? Well, remember, everything is the fifth of something. So that A minor is a good indicator, a good hint that we're going back again where A is the fifth of. It doesn't always have to be a dominant seven to lead you back to a certain position. In fact, sometimes having it, having too many dominant seven chords can be kind of jarring, depending on the melody that maybe you're singing or playing over. So in this case, the A minor just serves as a purpose to get us back to start that whole phrase again. D minor, G, C, and then after that, we end up going to E7. Now why would we go to E7, you ask? Well, take a second and try to figure it out. If there's a 7 chord, it's trying to tell us something. It's like the key that just like, it's like a, it's like the national treasure map that's showing Nicolas Cage how to steal the Declaration of Independence, right? It's like, what is the hint? I don't remember where it is, but E7 must be leading me to where E is the 5 of A, B, C, D, E. A, A minor, that's exactly where we started again. So now we just do that same pattern again, right? So let's play the entire song from the beginning, and I'll just call the relationship uh, to each other. All right, so starting on A minor. A minor, D minor, G, C. What's the fifth there? F, D minor, or B flat, then E7, a minor, A7 to lead us to D minor, which is the 2, to the 5, G, to the 1. I want to play this part again so that A minor sets me up to do the D minor again, to the 2, 5, 1, then back to C. Then I want to start the whole thing again, so I start back on E. Now, uh, to make it sound maybe a little more like the original, a little jazzier, let's turn all of those into 7th chords. A minor 7, D minor 7, G7, seven, C major 7, F major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7 to A minor 7 to A7, seven, D minor 7, G, C, What's this? Okay, this is gonna be yet another thing that we can learn. There's so much that you can learn from this. If you wanna learn more stuff like this, just broken down into individual lessons, check out my Patreon because I got tons of lessons about all this stuff, maybe a little more specifically in order instead of jumping around. But I do like jumping around because, you know, maybe if you already learned the song, maybe there's just different things you can glean from one video that covers absolutely everything. But at, at the very end, when we want to finally resolve on C, right, our home chord, the natural way that we've talked about before is going to a G7 to C major. But a cooler way, I think it's cooler, is taking the four chord and making it minor, a minor four chord. This is just an, uh, a trick that you can memorize to do stuff. Every time you see a minor four chord, C, D, E, F, We've played F before. If we played as F minor, it sets you up for the kill shot of that home chord, okay? So, that's the last thing we're gonna do. To end the song, we're gonna go minor four to one. So many tips and tricks in this video, oh my gosh. Who does it? Who does tips and tricks better than, than Sean Daniel and Elixir Strings? That's why you're here, right? So, to make an entire interesting chord progression, we're gonna do all of this as seventh chords with some chromatic jumping around in between. What I mean by that is like if I'm going A minor seven to D. All 
All I'm doing is like connecting those chords. Maybe just walking it down. I'm not worried about what notes they are on the key. It's like if I'm going to a G chord, I'm going to go A flat G. Always just kind of getting to one spot. This is all about just going in a certain direction. So start on A minor. One, two, three, four. A minor seven to D minor seven. Walk to G seven. C major seven. F major seven. To E seven. A minor dominant seven to D minor. G. Then back to C. A. That A sets us up for the D again. The two five one to G. F minor. And again, that's pretty much the entire song, just depending on which part you're going in and out of, right? So, uh, again, I think it's a, it's a classic song. Everybody should learn it. And again, it taught me just to maybe think that, all right, when you see a bunch of chords in there, they're usually there for a reason. I'm not going to say all the time. For all you math rock people out there, I know that sometimes you just put a chord in to be fancy because, you know, it makes, makes your dad proud or whatever math rock people do. I can't really speak for them because I'm not one of them, but eh, it's just it. The, the more you look at something, the more the pattern is going to come out of it. So I know that I became a much better guitar player once I started kind of maybe taking a little bit more time to be thoughtful about why I'm playing a certain chord or going in a certain direction or using a chord voicing instead of just memorizing it and drilling it. Always think of the why and the how and be more thoughtful about it. And then you'll start to see patterns more. And then you'll have a much easier time learning songs, recalling songs, and it might even help you in just kind of like finding a new direction for maybe a song that you're working on or an original piece that you're trying to trying to find a new direction for because really everything is a two five one it's always a great way to, to point you in the right direction so just think of down at five chords think of the root notes the relationship to each other and uh you know just get some elixir strings on your guitar and you'll be rocking in no time so thanks again to them for sponsoring the video thank you for watching it if you have any questions or comments hit me in the comment section instagram twitter or the website i'll talk to you all soon thanks a lot